The Taliban has freed an American contractor in exchange for an Afghan drug dealer. The group says this is a new era of relations with Washington. But will it change anything? And are diplomatic ties between the Taliban and the US even possible? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to Inside Story. I am Hashim Ahalbarra. The Taliban has released U.S. Navy veteran Mark Fririks in exchange for an Afghan tribal leader. Fririks was abducted in February 2020 while Haji Bashar Norzay was serving a life sentence for smuggling heroin. He's the second Afghan to be freed in recent months. In June, Asadullah Haroun was released from Guantanamo Bay. He has spent 15 years in U.S. custody on suspicion of having links to al-Qaeda, but was never charged. Norzay was close to the Taliban's founder, Mullah Omar. U.S. President Joe Biden says the decision wasn't taken lightly. Lee Hardin has more from Doha. My name is Mark Ferrix. Today is 28. November 2021. A proof of life video published nearly two years into his detention showed Mark Frerichs in Afghanistan. The former U.S. naval officer and civilian engineer had been kidnapped by the Taliban in January 2020 and reportedly held by the Haqqani network. Now he's free. His return is the culmination of many, many months of tireless uh, and effective work uh, by so many colleagues in, uh, in our government. The, the Taliban released Frerichs in exchange for Haji Bashar Nurzai, an Afghan tribal leader who had been serving a life sentence in the U.S. for opium smuggling. Nurzai was granted clemency and received a hero's welcome at the Kabul airport. My exchange, I think, with God willing, can lead to peace between Afghanistan and America. An American was released and I am also free with the help of the Islamic Emirate and Mujahideen. In a statement announcing Frerich's release, U.S. President Joe Biden made no mention of the prisoner swap, but said Frerich's freedom required difficult decisions to be made. Frerich's sister thanked U.S. officials and said what Biden did was right in order to save her brother's life. The Trump administration tried and failed to secure Frerich's release and was criticized for not making it a requirement of the U.S. Taliban peace deal. His continued detention remained a major impediment to improved U.S.-Afghanistan relations after the Taliban takeover last year. There was a concern uh, that after the uh, al-Zawahiri's killing in Kabul, uh, apparently there won't be any contacts between the two sides. But uh, this release indicates that uh, despite the concerns, as I said, shared by, by the U.S. and the uh, Western community, the U.S. is uh, still uh, in contact with the Taliban and keeping a sort of engagement. Qatar helped mediate the release of Mark Frerichs and has been pivotal in hosting negotiations between the U.S. and the Taliban. Now, at least one other American remains a hostage in Afghanistan, and U.S. President Joe Biden says more needs to be done to ensure all citizens abroad are freed. Leah Harding, Inside Story, Doha. The U.S. has refused to recognize the Taliban administration since it took control of Afghanistan in August last year. American troops were forced to withdraw completely after two-decade occupation. The Taliban is not internationally recognized as a legitimate government, especially after it backtracks on pledges to uphold human rights and women's education. International aid has all but dried up pushing most of the population into poverty. The UN estimates 6 million people are at risk of famine. Last week, the U.S. announced it was setting up a relief fund using Afghan central bank assets it froze last year to prevent the Taliban from accessing the money. Let's bring in our guest in Washington, D.C. is Peter Zwak, a retired brigadier general in the U.S. Army. He served in the NATO mission to Afghanistan. In Tuscany is Graham Smith, senior consultant on Afghanistan for the International Crisis Group. And in Sydney is Ahmed Shuja Jamal, 
co-author of The Decline and Fall of Republican Afghanistan and a former member of the National Security Council of Afghanistan. Welcome to the program. General Zwak, should we see this prisoner swap as just a swap, nothing more, or something that could potentially pave the way to a bigger American role in Afghanistan in the future? Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, Assalamu alaikum to your, uh, your viewers. Um, I, I would not get ahead of, um, of this act important um, 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 hostage exchange. Uh, there's a lot that can be, a lot that needs to be done. Uh, we have to remember just six weeks ago, um, uh, the uh, U.S. Um, uh, struck and uh, killed Ayman Zawahiri. Uh, in uh, in a uh, suburb of uh, of uh, Kabul, um, and this troubled uh, the U.S. side and, and and our allies in that and that the um, that the uh, Taliban uh, regime, the Emirates regime, had promised uh, in Doha negotiations that there would be uh, no uh, no terrorists harbored in there. But the bottom line, that was six weeks ago, and we just had a, uh, a uh, hostage exchange, um, prisoner exchange, which is significant. And, um, and the foreign minister basically said that the, the uh, uh, Afghan foreign minister did state that th this uh, is a new chapter. So something's happening. There's a lot going on in the world around Afghanistan and involving um, uh, nations. And so I would see this mm -hmm. not as a breakthrough, but it is promising, especially if it can help open up the humanitarian human rights mm -hmm. uh, and huma uh, issues uh, that uh, concern all of us. Graham, when the Taliban say this is a new era of relations with the U.S., is this an accurate characterization? No, probably not. That's probably a bit too optimistic on the part of the Taliban diplomats, some of whom would really like to see uh, a more constructive relationship uh, with the United States and the Western world. They have been really, you know, trying to end the, the deadliest war on the planet Earth and, and put it behind them. But, you know, uh, you know, as my colleague just said, it's really tough for uh, the outside world to completely turn a new page while, you know, for example, uh, the number one leader of Al Qaeda is killed on the Taliban's doorstep in Kabul and millions of Afghan girls remain shut out of about half of the secondary schools in the country. So there still are these, I would say, major stumbling blocks in the relationship between the Taliban and the outside world. Ahmed, uh, as you know, the, the Taliban have been desperate for international recognition from the Americans in particular because they know that diplomatic recognition would follow uh, from uh, the international community. Cash would flow into the country and that would uh, help the Taliban significantly. Now, after this prisoner swap, do you see an opportunity for the Taliban to further expand its reach towards different countries all over the world? Um, thank you for having me, first of all. I think I would echo the previous guests who mm -hmm. said that it would be a bit too mature to say that this would lay the foundations for a move towards the recognition of the Taliban, formal recognition of the Taliban, because we know that informally, both the U.S., but also other rival countries in the region like China Pakistan, uh, and Russia, non-rival countries like Pakistan have uh, relationships with, with the Taliban. Some of those relationships are to the level of actually accepting Taliban designated uh, so-called diplomats in the embassies that are still active, that were accredited to the former um, the Republican government of Afghanistan. But having said that, I think it is important for us to recognize that Haji Bashir Nurzai is actually another major Nurzai tribal leader who is also of the same tribe as the supreme leader of the Taliban at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so so on the, if, if the Americans actually got a citizen back, the Taliban got a founding father back, a founding father who is very closely related to the tribal leader. And the reason why I call him a founding father is because he was there when Mullah Omar was, was founding the Taliban and trying to build something out of nothing. And he was there uh, uh, being a financier and using his networks. So here is a man 
who's walked in both worlds, the Taliban's worlds and the Americans' worlds, and he's a been able to maintain his relationships uh, in both. So to the extent that this mm -hmm. is significant, I think it is significant on the Taliban side, but we do not expect any major shifts towards formal diplomatic recognition of the Taliban for the reasons that were described earlier. General Svok, you, you, you served in Afghanistan. You do understand that the country presents the, uh, America with an extraordinary dilemma, which is basically when the Americans pulled out, they left behind a political vacuum that was exploited by many. And the case of Ayman al-Zawahiri was just an indication of the danger of uh, not being there. But at the same time, how do you think will the Americans think about any potential rapprochement with the Taliban in the near future? Is it going to be a very cautious, prolonged political process? Um, absolutely. Uh, it will be prolonged and uh, cautious. Uh, the, 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 the Taliban, uh, the uh, Emirati, must, must show um, uh, sincere results. Uh, and this is why um, Zawahiri's uh, death was so important, because it was a signal from us and our allies that, no, you can't harbor transnational terrorists on your land as you said you would not. All right, six weeks later, we, we had this extraordinary meeting uh, at the airport in exchange. That is an opening. That is that is shows open-mindedness and pragmatism on both sides. Now the devil will be in the details, as my colleague said. Um, and will there be human rights? Uh, will will girls be able to go back to school? Um, um, uh, all these issues. Oh, can the Taliban get a handle on ISIS, Horasan, that uh, continues to kill and maim? Primarily uh, Hazara and Shiites. So, so, uh, so, and 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 that was uh, bad things happened there this year. Saying that, we are in a bit of a new age great game in the region, and while the U.S. I believe has no interest, zero, of having boots in the ground there, they have shown they have an over the horizon presence, and there are issues with uh, Taliban's neighbors, and I think that the Taliban leadership feels it whether mm -hmm. it is Iran, whether it is Pakistan, uh, China, Russia, uh, and, and other regional uh, neighbors. Graeme, uh, now the, the Americans, as General Zwag has just said, uh, have absolutely no interest in sending boots on the ground in any time in the future. But I think they do understand at the same time if they keep freezing the central, the Afghan central bank uh, assets uh, in the US, that has the potential to just create uh, chaos in Afghanistan. And I think ultimately the Americans are pretty much concerned about a chaotic scenario and disintegration of Afghanistan. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. Um, at this point, uh, American interests, I think, are primarily in stability, in preventing the large-scale proliferation of weapons and militancy throughout the region, uh, and probably in assisting uh, European partners in stemming the flow of migration uh, to Europe. And so for all of those reasons, yes, um, the United States and the Western world have been sort of reinvesting in trying to put the pieces back together to quite literally keep the lights on uh, in Afghanistan. And I think you saw that with, uh, as you mentioned, the, the recent movement on the central banking assets, which will be put into a trust fund in, Gen in Geneva. Initially, it will be uh, 3.5 billion US dollars, but it could grow as other parts of the frozen assets are collected. And, and that will hopefully allow for a bit of macroeconomic stability, hope, you know, some slow and calibrated uh, flow of money back into DAB, the central bank. And that will allow for, um, you know, uh, the, for the economy to get back on its feet. And so, yes, you know, it, it is odd after everything that's happened for the outside world to be helping the Taliban with an economic recovery. But that's exactly what's required at this moment. Ahmed, with all the international concerns about the, the way the, uh, the Taliban are handling uh, uh, daily business of their own country, they remain extremely powerful. There's, there seems to be absolutely no genuine challenge to their own authority. Do you think that this could be an indication to everybody that pragmatism should prevail and that one day or another the world has to come to deal with the Taliban? Um, although this is really not the first time that the U.S. has engaged in an exchange of a hostage 
for a convicted Taliban prisoner or other type of Taliban leader, but all the ta non-Taliban actors in Afghanistan today, from the National Resistance Front, which is an armed opposition resistance front group, to the girls and the groups that are being targeted, including the Hazaras, the Panjshiri civilians, and even the Turkmen, Turkic uh, ethnic groups, are watching. Uh, because this will not be the first time that the US has been calculated and has been pragmatic, but it is another indicator that anyone expecting the U.S. to commit to notions of human rights, political inclusion, and sustain that commitment when the going really gets tough, they should really double check their assumptions. Uh, because the mere fact that the U.S. is dealing with the Taliban mere weeks after they killed the leader of Al-Qaeda in their capital under the Taliban uh, 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 protection, I think, is, is reason for the pragmatism that the Americans are approaching this with. Um, and, and it strengthens the Taliban significantly in Afghanistan because it signals not, to, not just to the people in Afghanistan who oppose the Taliban, who are asking for their rights, including the schoolgirls, but also other actors in the region who are thinking about supporting the opposition and the rights of the Afghan people, that the U.S., which is the major actor in this equation, remains absolutely disinterested at, uh, in, in those notions at this moment at a level that they can commit and follow through uh, when, when it really matters. General Svak, this is an extraordinary part of the world uh, amid an uh, ever-changing political landscape. What would, from your own perspective, constitute an effective U.S. strategy in Afghanistan in the near future? Should the Americans, in a way or another, reshape what they want to achieve when it comes to a place like Afghanistan under the current circumstances? Uh, first, I'd like to just follow up uh, with my colleague's statement. There is a resistance in, uh, in uh, Afghanistan to the Taliban that goes beyond ISIS. And my colleague mentioned the National Resistance Front that contests about seven uh, provinces. It's estimated primarily in the north and uh, north uh, North uh, East, um, uh, and that, and, and the and the Taliban has had to send up forces, troops, to try to fight this. So, so it, it's beyond ISIS, and it is contested in primarily the lands that sort of neighbor uh, the uh, uh, Central Asia. Um, so um, you've got that. I think as far as uh, the U.S. equities and everything else, um, I think it's it's a matter of uh, being uh, being uh, totally direct. Um, and looking uh, for um, uh, tangible, palpable uh, Taliban acts that would open it up. And yes, the region, um, it is a, a cross flow of influence and, and um, agenda. Uh, all these countries are up there and, and Afghanistan, as per its history, remains the crossroads. I think one reason that they reach out Again, is is the monetary side? It's a recognition, mm -hmm. but it is a Taliban recognition. They live in a tough neighborhood, um, uh, and um, and uh, that could only get tougher uh, if their uh, if their control, uh, rigid control, uh, starts to get really really brittle and and fracture uh, along the edges. Graham, do you think this could be the perfect moment for key players such as Russia and China to pull? Afghanistan towards their own sphere of influence? Well, yes, they've certainly been trying. Um, I spoke to someone who was in a meeting with uh, the Chinese foreign minister in Kabul, and they were promising a lot of things. They were talking about extending the so-called Belt and Road in Initiative all the way uh, into Afghanistan, uh, building railways and uh, reopening uh, mining projects. And so, yeah, there are a lot of big promises uh, coming from America's uh, historic rivals in the region. But so far, it really is the Western world that is uh, spending the money to try to get the country back on its feet. And so uh, the West remains the major uh, player. And, and the reason why they are doing business with the Taliban is because really there is no alternative at this point. You know, um, yes, there is a, a small uh, insurgency in the north and also in the east by, mm -hmm. by ISIS. But, you know, it's really when I was back there recently, I was, you know, I've been visiting the country since 2005. I was really struck by the level of calm on the streets. And so, you know, the, the Taliban are not going anywhere uh, for the moment. And so, you know, I, I think there really is a, a need to sit down and make a, a development plan with them. You know, how are we going to do irrigation? How are we going to uh, open up electricity corridors? These kinds of projects, because 
Um, there is no alternative, really. Um, dumping bags of food in you know, the, the largest humanitarian operation in the world just isn't sustainable or sufficient. And so, yeah, there does have to be a more sort of rational economic plan okay. with the Taliban. Ahmed, in the absence of any progress when it comes to human rights, inclusive political process, uh, women's uh, girls' education and the issue of minorities, do you think it's too early to talk about any possible political reconciliation between the Afghan, different Afghan factions? In fact, it is, it is the time to talk about political reconciliation, not just political reconciliation, but about a political process in which the people of Afghanistan, men, women, minorities, people with disabilities, urban, rural, can sit together and actually discuss the kind of government that they want in their future. Because this Taliban Haqqani regime has been violently imposed and tacitly accepted by the international community, and it is not accepted by the people of Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And it should be uh, noted, though, that although ISIS is part of a pan-Islamist global caliphate, that the resistance that is the National Resistance Front is not com comparable for in, in any way to ISIS. And I think the calm that my colleague has observed in Kabul is absolutely factually correct mm -hmm. um, uh, that the Taliban who used to be the, the authors of many of the large attacks that killed Afghans, American civilians and, uh, and non-civilians um, are no longer doing those attacks. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but the Hazara minority and other minorities, the Sufi religious order is are being targeted uh, just as they were uh, uh, before the Taliban came violently to power. Uh, the, the thing about calm is that it is calm in a graveyard, but you don't want to live in a graveyard because there is no life there. Okay. Um, and I think the calm is observed on the streets of Afghanistan is a calm like that in which the Taliban have effectively silenced by force any kind of life or signs of activity. And there will be no economic activity because nobody would like to invest anything in a country um, in which there is no rule of law, that there is no parliament, that there is no methods in which uh, no uh, uh, right. areas where they could redress their business grievances, even if the, um, the, the agreement, the arrangement in the trust fund arrangement uh, is finalized in, in Switzerland, I think there's going to be major difficulties because the political environment right. in Afghanistan is going to remain the same. So as long as the Taliban are in power, uh, very little things, uh, very little is going to change economically and politically, General, um, so even if there are things outside that are technical. Okay, I get your point. General Zwak, the Americans have two sources of leverage. Uh, international recognition and uh, financial assistance. Now, they're not on the ground. Do you think that this could be a moment for the Americans to reconsider teaming up with key regional players such as of, uh, Pakistan, India, to be able to try to reconsider what it wants to achieve when it comes to a place like Afghanistan? I think that all, always uh, to work the diplomatic track um, um, is, is uh, carefully positive understanding these countries have direct equity in Afghanistan while we do stay. We have to remember one thing. There are also millions of Afghans, influential Afghans in the diaspora in our country that also have a lot of interest and can wield influence also inside Afghanistan and in our capitals. And we should not forget them. This is going to, yes, anything that we can do uh, we don't want to fight. We don't want to get into it. But, but anything that we can help regionally to proactively and constructively um, aid Afghanistan, humanitarian Afghanistan, with, uh, uh, without giving any, any um, uh, power mechanism to the Taliban, I think is just prudent. And as I said, there is a new age great game mm -hmm. that is likely grow. So yes, carefully, eyes wide open, pragmatically, and not, uh, and, uh, and, and again, <laughs> there no, no harboring transnational terrorists and no, no export of uh, malign behaviors. And then the internal human rights that mean so much to not just my country, but all of our countries. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, General Zwak, Graham Smith, Ahmed, Shuja Jamal, I really appreciate your insight. Thank you very much indeed for your contribution to the program.
And thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website aljazeera.com for further discussion. Go to our Facebook page, that's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story from Yahashim Ahlbala and the entire team here in Doha. Bye for now.